Hey, what's going on guys? It's Mungabai here on behalf of MMOBama.com and welcome back to another first look. Today we're taking a look at ZMR or Zombies, Monsters, Robots, which is a third person PVE slash competitive PVP shooter and it's uh, being published in North America by InMass Entertainment. It's actually known by a couple names. If you're in Europe, it is being published by Infernum under the name Hazard Ops. And uh, if you're in Asia, you may have already been able to experience this game under its original name, Mercenary Ops, during which it was being developed by Yingpei Games, uh, which actually used to be a part of Epic Games, having helped in the development of Gears of War. So you're gonna see a lot of the combat mechanics from Gears of War sort of permeate throughout uh, ZMR here. And whether you like that or not remains to be seen, uh, but those mechanics are pretty prevalent in the game itself. So here we can see I have my Smokeify character here, a uh, pretty brutish individual. Unfortunately, you're only able to make one character per server it seems, and uh, being that there's only one server right now, I have one character. Luckily though, it doesn't seem like there's any sort of need to have a separate character. There's no classes of sorts, and I haven't even seen a talent tree, I believe. So it really just comes down to what items you've unlocked on the character, as well as sort of the cosmetic items that you've added, you know, and so on and so forth. That being said, you can do some customization. You can change, I believe, the hairstyle, some of the hair color perhaps, as well as being male or female. So you're not locked into just being burly white men here all the time. Uh, but I am thus a burly white man because I am white and I dream of being burly. Alright, so let's go ahead and drop into the game here. Like I said, it is PvE and PvP based. Uh, so you can choose between these two separate sets of servers. Incidentally, PvE is uh, quite a lot more popular than the PvP. And I guess that's because people sort of look at the PvP as... Um, an, early, an early look at it would be as the PvP was sort of like a poor man's Gears of War, essentially. And we'll get into that once we get into it, uh, but right now we'll talk about the PvE. So there's different PvE modes. As you can see, this is Paranormal Ops. There's also Assault, Kill Everything. Um, assault and Assault Ops allows you to basically defend against waves, while Paranormal, paranormal Ops, rather, has you sort of navigating these labyrinth, uh, long sort of na uh, corridors and going through one trap or one enclosed area to the next fighting off different waves of zombies here. So this is difficulty advanced is the more difficult version here. I'm going to go ahead and enter into the match. As you can see it's called Land of the Dead. It does tend to lock up here. So we're going to go ahead and cut until we actually get in the game. That way I actually ensure that I'm in the match. So we'll be right back with the actual gameplay. Okay, we've made it in guys. Uh, it did actually lock up there for a second. That's something that I would hope uh, in mass entertainment would fix with this version. I don't know if that's actually present. Oh, I gotta get on these. I don't know if that's actually present in the European version, uh, but it is a main major problem in this version, which unfortunately uh, means that a lot of times you'll crash out before you get into a uh, actual match. Okay, so as you'll notice here, whoa, I had to watch out for that. Uh, there is that reloading mechanic, the sort of bar that you saw. The more you get it closer to the wider portion of the bar, the better the uh, reloading time is. So here we've got a sort of wave system where we're having to defend against these guys coming through almost like Call of Duty entrances here. Um, in some of the other match modes, you're able to actually repair and recreate these barriers, if you will. Got to make sure that I'm on the right platforms. All right, we're on the right platform here. And the reason for that is, uh, in the other modes, it, it functions more like the, the typical sort of Call of Duty survival mode, you know, defend against waves and what have you. Oops, I didn't actually uh, get my timing right there. Ooh, took some damage there to the face. Let's try this again. There we go. Got a, a more moderate thing. All right, so we'll come back down here. So this is advanced mode. Um, e normal mode is fairly quite easy, actually. Uh, while Advance here actually has a, a separate boss, a an additional large Pharaoh zombie uh, that we'll have to fight. Hopefully we can get there. The game incorporates Unreal 3 Engine. Uh, so there is, of course, the physics. Although the models themselves um, leave a little bit to be desired, uh, quite honestly. Oops. I think a guy... Oh no! They're going to get blasted there! Dang it. So if you don't get on these platforms, what actually occurs is... Uh, the ground fills up with this acid like... Oh, come on. I think we're all shooting at different characters. Who are we shooting at? I'm shooting at this guy? Oh no! Oh my god. Okay, wait, we survived? Well, that's like... useful. They don't keep raining down death upon me. 
Oh man, I keep getting the reloads. You have to remember that there is the sort of reload timer here. Yeah, I got that guy. All right, grab some more ammo. Ammo can be scarce at times. In this area, thankfully, it's not too bad. I'm pretty low though. Lots of explosions. I think someone threw a grenade next to me, unfortunately. Gotta watch for those platforms. And now after a few uh, waves of these, oh, looks like we're coming up here. This is the last wave, so we'll just have to take these guys out and then we'll be able to move on. Get the reload, there we go. So these are just sort of like your medium mini bosses. They're not necessarily too difficult. And they do have weak spots, for example, their heads, of course. Sometimes their backs. Oh, hey, whoa, let's, let's just move on. I can use spacebar here, as you'll know. It allows me to dash away. It also allows me to barrel roll and stick to objects. I don't like the fact that it's all on space. I would prefer it to also be on something like uh, shift or sprint, just because I feel like when you have all these things tied to one button... Oh, I need another gun. Gotta heal our, our compatriot here. Come on up. Hopefully I'm getting protected. It looks like the smoke is killing me. I'll have to get out. I'm down to my pistol. I need more ammo. I also have grenades. When someone dies, you can pick up their weapon. And this is pretty important for PvP as well. But I can still get headshots here. Are they throwing grenades? They are throwing grenades. What are zombies doing? What are pharaoh zombies doing with grenades? I can throw a grenade too. Looks like I did little damage. Although I think it hit the uh, large crocodile pharaoh dude here. Not quite sure what this guy is. I can't really see his face. It's like a lizard zombie. What are you? Oh, I guess your body's gonna blow up and disappear. Oops. Man, I can't even. <laughs> I can't even reload a pistol. Okay. Like my guy's pretty incompetent. He can't reload a pistol. Pistol correctly. Here we have a couple of uh, normal boss fights. I guess you could say. Unfortunately, I'm out of ammo. One of them will spin his, uh... Come on. There we go. Ah, let's get away from that. One of them will spin uh, his blade while the other one uh, will cast lightning. And you have to shoot the one that casts lightning when he does it. Otherwise, he'll continuously cast it. And, uh, deal damage to everybody at all times. Come on, stop casting it. There we go. They're both down. Damn it. I'm out of ammo. Okay, well, this is not going to go well. This is advanced mode, so it is harder. Come on. Stop casting. There we go. Let's grab that. Oh, wow. I just... Okay, that's now... Now, Kelp. So you can see you have the Gears of War sort of bleed out mechanic where you can run away. Thank you, kind sir. Pick up the ammo. There's a guy right behind me. There's another guy down. Come on, stop casting. There we go. So in advanced mode, it can be pretty tough, especially if you don't have the uh, any sort of upgraded gear. There is certain gear that uh, does make you stronger. And certain weapons are, of course, better suited. This is just the weapon I get started with here. Um, can you... Anubis... Can you just chill here? Just... Anubis, come on. Anubis, please. Why... Why you gotta beat up on me like so? Oh, come on. What? Whoa, really? Everybody... There was other live people. You gotta come and kill the guy that's... Let's die in here. Alright, so there are revive tokens. I have three currently. So I'll go ahead and spawn my revive. We'll kill off Anubis there. So yeah, it was perfect flawless run. No problem. Alright. So at this point, we'll move on to the inner sanctum of this pyramid here. Where we'll fight the real end boss. Which I believe on advanced mode isn't the real end boss. I think there's actually a even larger one. We'll move through and see these uh, little cutscenes here, and then get to the spinning blades. Which is probably the second most deadly area in uh, this uh, Land of the Dead map. There's actually an area you didn't get to see because we came in about four rounds in, but there's an area whereby uh, there's a lot of falling roller, like Indiana Jones style boulders coming down. 
and you have to do some uh, Mario 64 navigation around them. It's quite entertaining, honestly, and I think that's why the PvE in this game really shines, because there's not too many sort of arcadey um, third-person shooter experiences out like this so far. And plus, you can do it with like eight people or so, sometimes more. Those are like giant... Those things from like the mummy. They're called Necrotix. Oh god! No, I I totally screwed that up. Alright. Let's try this now. Oh! Whoa! Oh, they're moving again. Oh god, what's happening? Someone turned him off for a second. Oh man! No, we're still good. We're still good. Making it around. Making it around. Whoa! Whoa! Yeah! Okay, I made it. I made it. Oh. I've made it. Wait, am I the only one that's actually made it? Oh my god. Oh man, this may be a problem. I don't want ticks! Right. Oh my god, so many ticks! So many ticks. Now you can't hit F Ugh, to knock him around. Help me, ticks! Not. Someone's got a flamethrower, another person's got a mallet. So you do have some sort of more eccentric weaponry. In fact, on a lot of the other sort of survival uh, maps, you'll have large bosses come out, mini bosses come out at times. And they'll be possessing things like rocket launchers, grenade launchers, um, flamethrowers, and you can actually grab them for a short amount of time. Basically, power weapons. I think those other guys are still stuck behind there, unable to pass. I think we're actually able to move up ahead of them, and they'll just automatically teleport here. Hopefully that's the case. Well, we're about to find out. <laughs> I don't really like the fact that there's these pre-rendered videos that play because they're very low quality in comparison to the game itself and I would have wished that it actually rendered it within the game. So we're all here, yes, okay, perfect. Now I actually found this person to be quite easy on normal mode but it looks like on uh, on the, the lighter difficulty it's, uh, it's quite a lot more guards and what have you. That person just had his head. Like, where did it even go? Okay, I think it like went inside of him. Yeah, this is significantly more difficult on uh, on advanced. There's gun turrets that you can place. I have yet to earn myself a gun turret, but there are some equipables that you can put down. And I think there is different gun turrets too. Whoa, what's going on? She die? Oh, oh my God! Whoa, she did not do this on normal mode. Maybe she was bugged or maybe we just killed her too quickly. She kind of just stood there in normal mode and cast at people. All right, see if I can help out here. Not really doing too much, I think, because of my less than stellar weaponry. There's one, Necro Hounds. Run away here. There is regenerating health, so as long as you can uh, kite people long enough, you will get up to speed. Alright, I'm healing. Keeping everybody alive, not have, you know, making sure nobody has to waste any resources. Hey, at least I can take out the little guys. Oh, whoa, ho, ho. That, uh, that was my death. That was straight up my death. Alright, so I'll revive myself here. I have one revive token left. Note to self, do not be near her when she casts that. There's explosions everywhere. People are just blowing up left and right. I, don't, I can't tell if that's us blowing them up. Oh, man, I'm out of ammo. Okay, it was a gun over here. Now there's no longer a gun. Here, I will shoot you with my puny 
my pistol will clearly there's anarchy going on guys there's absolute anarchy everywhere Alright, there's that one down. Here we go, this looks like a regeneration aura. Another type of turret to be placed. Oh my god. Get off me. And of course, this is just one style of monster. They don't all look like zombies, depending on which match you're actually playing. Uh, or map, rather. Some of them are basically mutations of these they'll be wearing different gear um, and they'll look more like you know like pirates on not pirates zombies what am I talking about uh, they'll look more like like spacey you know cybernetic robot zombies essentially this fight is getting crazy this was nothing like this on normal <laughs> oh I have 99 bullets in this how do I have so many bullets this thing is like I can just fire this thing Non-stop. I have a god weapon somehow. Get out of here. We're getting down to the last bars. Oh, I, I somehow had... N I think it was like infinite ammo for a little bit. Someone's ability. Either it's ability or it's the turrets. She's doing that crazy thing again. You know what that means. Where's my other weapons? I want, I want to get this flamethrower. The corpse burner. Burn them corpses. She's getting low, guys. Get out of here. Gotta wait for it to cool down. So I think these weapons just drop in here, which is kind of neat. You know, even if you have normal weaponry, uh, you'll always have the opportunity to to you know pick up these more eccentric weapons and uh, use them. It gives a lot of flavor to the game, to be honest. Especially when we talk about the the cash shop. The cash shop itself uh, tends to be uh, pretty lackluster in terms of how long you actually have to grind in order to unlock weapons permanently. There is a sort of rental option that you'll see in a lot of uh, foreign. What is this thing here? Snake. This crazy snakes trying to. Trying to get me here. All right, burner. I think this is about the time though that we gotta watch out because zombies start popping out of the floor. Yep, yep. Burn all these guys. Getting quite a lot of kills, which is nice. Meat tenderizer. So there are some uh, different achievements you can. Uh, net yourself as well. I oh oh no! Come on! I like that I can just burn them. All right, I'm down. Is she dead? Did we do it? Snaps! We did. Look at that, guys. We ended up winning that round. Not too shabby. I didn't do great. But you notice I also got a token. And I got 55 kills, 2 deaths, 10,000 points. So this token, I you know, you can regenerate tokens, essentially. Let's head back to the main menu, then. Back at the main menu, I, as you can see, I've leveled up. Finally got promoted to target dummy. I got the LMG fiberglass stock for 3 days. whoop de whoop As well as a silver bullet and 3,500 gold. I also got a new mission. This mission, you'll get a lot of missions or quests that you can go on uh, to increase your credits, essentially. And you'll then subsequently use those credits, of course, uh, to go on and, and purchase gear and what have you. Speaking of gear, if we go back and uh, take a look here in the locker, you'll be able to do your loadouts from here. You start with just the primary assault rifle and the sidearm and these grenades. You can have eventual loadouts here, and some of them you'll have to purchase them in the cash shop. You also can break it down by all your items, what you have, etc. Uh, although these items, you know, like the gun turret here, it's pretty cool. Press V to choose turret and left click to place. I did not even know that. It looks like I have a stack of five of those. I don't think these are permanent in the sense that I think that once you use one, the stack will go down, and so it's not like a permanent attachment. You have to always have them, and that's what it seems like. 
If we move on to uh, the combination, you'll be able to combine like a gear with a other piece of gear here to uh, better your weaponry. And then of course there's the store where we can go through uh, the different weapons and such. Now it's kind of confusing because there's a lot of different currencies. You'll see there's three different currencies up here. Uh, there is this blue currency, which I believe is the main cash up currency. There's also rep currency here. Uh, which you can gain through quests and what have you. And then gold, which is the primary currency you gain in game. As far as I can tell, um, they're all sort of just locked based on what type of currency it is. So here's the weapons that you can purchase uh, with rep. You know, you get a couple of different assault rifles. I don't think this has really been fully sort of fleshed out as of yet. As you can see, there's not really too much in the rep area other than these menu items. Uh, but if we go to like weapons, you'll see there's quite a lot of weapons available to you uh, as a free-to-play player. The only caveat is some of these weapons uh, are really expensive when you purchase them with the in-game currency. And I think this price recently went up. If we look at this, there's 343000 to purchase an assault rifle, an AK-47. I have currently 36000 uh, so it's quite a ways off for me, even if I did the quest, which I believe about 2,000 or so uh, credits a day. You can see the missions here. And the rewards, 5,000. You know, you can get some decent rewards off of uh, some of these. Uh, but even with those, you know, you maybe get 10, 12,000 in a day. Considering you're going to need 300,000, that's, that's still quite a lot of, of quests there. Not all of them will offer a comparable amount of uh, currency versus the time it takes to complete them. So some of these here, like kill 100 enemies PVE, means you're gonna be doing multiple missions. They're not simply just do one mission, get the rewards. It's gonna take you know some time to grind up to those. You can, of course, if you wanted to do temporary, three day or seven day, all the way up to 30 days. Uh, and three days costs about half of what I have right now, just for three days. So definitely people are gonna be, as I can foresee, getting those three-day weapons through uh, the missions that you can complete and just using those and then using stock weapons uh, while they wait to accrue the, the real currency because I don't really see uh, a real good benefit to buying three-day. You know, I really don't like the rental system at all. I think it's pretty contrived, uh, especially when it's going to take half of my currency just to rent it for three days. So, you know, do I even get enough time to play each of those weapons over the course of three days? You know, it's all arbitrary. It's not based around how long you're actually logging in the game. It's merely based around three actual days, um, solid days rather. Okay, so there's the VIP stuff as well. Uh, there are some VIP weapons as you'll notice here. I can't comment on their effectiveness versus gold or rep items, uh, but there are ones that you can purchase here which appear to at least in some part be unique versus the standard weaponry you can get. I mean, you can get baseball bats and what have you, uh, but I don't see anything in terms of its stats, uh, so I wouldn't be able to comment on its effectiveness in comparison there. So clearly a lot of things that you could purchase with cash and a lot of different systems for you to take into account. If you're just gonna sort of go into the mentality of just playing the game uh, for fun and not really worrying about the weapons and what things you're unlocking, and then I think to an extent the game would be fine and you wouldn't have to uh, think about that so much. Uh, but alright, let's jump into just a little bit of PvP at this point and we'll take a look at that before wrapping up the first look. Holy moly guys, we got into a match. So something you didn't witness is me trying to start a PvP match or even get into a PvP match. Um, for some reason, most of the newer maps tend to not ever load for me. In fact, the game... Uh, outright crashes uh, a majority of the time. I'd say nine times out of ten, I've noticed. So this map here is called Area 51. It's an area filled with old tech from NASA, they say, that people can come in and scavenge. You'll notice that there's actually a pretty cool map effect going on now, uh, whereby you'll sometimes lose vision due to the fact uh, that there's these dust storms that kick up. There's also a sort of super weapon that you can grab. Uh, it does make you considerably slower, and it has a fixed amount of ammo, and I can't get off the wall and die. <laughs> I could not pull myself off the wall there, and it, it, just, it kept like pulling me to that. It was really stupid. I don't think you can uh, dodge roll too much with those large weapons. All right, so they scored themselves uh, their initial kill here. This is just like a, a standard deathmatch mode. It's like there was an execution that happened. Come here, aha! 
I can execute this guy. There are straight up executions that you can do when you run up to people. Uh, or you can just shoot them outright. Looks like he had a knife that he was pulling out. I could pick up his knife if I want. And that is one way you can try out different weapons if people have them is uh, when they drop them. Now I know there's a guy over there. Got him. Oh, he ended up pulling me out. Now, when you get downed, uh, I don't really know the mechanic in terms of whether or not you uh, get downed immediately or if there's like a certain threshold of damage you have to take or if you can, while in a down state or while you're getting into a down state, rather. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Where is this guy? I know he's over there. We both threw him at each other. Get away. It's pretty cool that you can have these sort of like fights here. Try and get closer. Oh, a nice little flank there from my ally. Thank you very much. I'll take that. Someone's got a shotgun, it seems. Oh. I do have to say that... Uh, I took out the other guy. Oh, shotgun to the back. No. No, no. He's going to go ahead and, uh, I guess, take my arm off there in the corner. So yeah, the PvP definitely feels a little bit clunkier than the PvE, just because I think the PvE works well with eight players or however many as you progress through the mat match. Um, I do find that oh, there we go, got that guy. I do find that uh, the whole sticking to walls, as you can notice here, uh, it gets really jittery, and I think that's mainly because of the fact that the game relies on peer-to-peer -peer networking. So interacting with the environment tends to get a little bit glitchy Let's see if I can throw that grenade over oh I wasn't able to get him it's interesting that it actually shows uh, the enemy kill like the enemy execution on the top of your screen because they would you would think that this would be your kill or your allies kill um, but in fact it denotes the enemies which is a little bit strange to me Let's go ahead and pick up this SMG here. I'm gonna go ahead and try out this cyclone gun again. Now right clicking makes you sort of hunker down and get better aim. You can just simply left click and shoot people as you go. This is a standard team deathmatch mode. However, hard to see anybody here. However, there are more modes available. In fact, there's a lot more eccentric modes. So there's things like Trying to shoot these guys. All right, looks like the storm calmed down a little bit. You need to be careful. I'm pretty exposed here out the open. This gun isn't. Uh, let's go ahead and just watch out for him just a little bit. And yeah, I, I couldn't hit him because of the the uh, incline right there. So while these weapons are kind of interesting, there we go. Let's see if anybody else comes out through here. I saw my that my ally was down there. See if there's anybody here. Jump down ever so slightly. Here's some. Ugh. And this is the problem, I think, is the fact that when you get shot, a lot of times you don't hear the bullets whizzing around you. Uh, I noticed that I'm gonna die to a grenade there, uh, but I noticed that a lot of times you'll just start seeing the bullets or seeing that you're taking damage. And it doesn't really, there's no audio cue, so you don't really know the direction until sometimes it's too late. Again, I don't really know if that's because it's peer-to-peer -peer and things like that are transmitted. Like the idea that it needs to to sort of send that information is transmitted. But I, I do find, oh, heal me up, allies. Nope, going to get crossfire there. Man, I'm doing terrible, aren't I? Pulling up here, I'm in the middle of the pack too two kills or two streaks I'm four and six okay so I'm I am negative right now I may be able to to pick this up a store grenade over there hopefully I can get uh, some damage off like I said before there is regenerating health even in PvP so outside of team deathmatch like king of the hill free-for-all uh, em elimination and then uh, demolition which is basically search and destroy man 
How can that guy? Crap. Freak. Ah, every these people using the cover to their advantage. That's one problem with things like third-person shooters is in PvP mode, it's really hard to sort of flank someone when they can see they can see where you're coming essentially. Got to stay back behind here. Wish there was an easier way to sort of pull yourself away. There we go. I got myself a reload while doing a barrel roll. Quite impressive. But you'll notice I am sort of glitching around a decent amount. And it's mainly the fact that the game uses, uses the, the pay to peer uh, Having hosted some myself, I posted one game and of course it was fine for me. In fact, uh, the game operated, I actually had the best score. Uh, and I, I'm, wondering, I'm wondering how much of that plays into effect, you know, how much uh, being the host really helps you in a PvP mode like this. Inmas has said that they want to host ranked games. In fact, there are ranked seasons. The first one just began recently. So that grenade over there. Man, but you see my camera just goes all over the place when I'm trying to pull myself away from there. Pull myself back. Man, and... He gets the peak first, and the damage goes to me first. And let's see, resin. I wish I could see like ping amounts. Ping here for resin is 40, uh, mine's 108. So it looks like he may be the host, or at least he's closer to the host, which definitely seems to be giving him the advantage on the peaks. You notice here, he usually gets like a couple shots off before I even see him. That's not one thing you should do. There's that guy. But I'm, I'm taking fatal damage as I move into cover and it's sort of hard to see um, who I'm getting shot by because for that reason. So I would definitely say if you're interested in trying the game in its current iteration, the PvP is a little bit lackluster for just for the simple fact of connectivity issues. I think some of the PvP modes are quite interesting, especially there I got that guy off in the corner. See if I can get this guy. It's almost not even, yeah, see, it's totally not even worth it to, to res people uh, because it takes so much time to do the actual res and people generally respawn much faster. I can just actually hold K2 and bleed out quicker as well. And if I bleed out, oh, we won anyway. So we got a victory, 60 to 50. So that, I guess that wasn't too bad. But that gives you a really rough view of the PVP in the game. And so we'll return to the main menu for our final thoughts. All right, guys, so we're returning to the main menu here. I uh, got a gun turret as a reward. I did the find your workstation, I guess, mission. I don't even really know what that one was. Got some extra uh, rewards there and what have you. And overall, uh, ended up finishing the round about middle. I I'd had 108 ping versus you know 40 or 50, which it seems to be the, the local host ping. And usually 108 isn't that big of a deal. You can get by. I've often played with 100, uh, over 100 Counter-Strike, which I also consider a pretty ping-oriented shooter that you require lower ping. And I've seemingly done a little bit better in Counter-Strike than, than here. Of course, this could have just been a bad match for me, but I did seem to feel as though they were getting the peaks earlier behind, you know, around corners and such. Uh, just for a few frames, which were enough to get a couple of squeezes off of the trigger and uh, take me out in the one-on-one -on -one, uh, instances where we're sort of both looking at each other when I when I could see them from afar it's a little different and I do have from personal experience known that when I was the host uh, I, I did much better and uh, I ended up I think having someone call me a hacker at one point so that is something you should keep in mind is that uh, there is no sort of way to filter out IP and IPs rather but pings so everybody can join in on the game and it's just solely dependent on who has the best connection essentially as host uh, you'll notice over here you can kind of see the status this one's waiting while these are fighting and this one's full so it doesn't really give you any idea as to the state of the connection of other players until you get into the game and you really start seeing people's pings and you see how your game is interacting with that and that coupled with the fact that it's really hard uh, to load into some maps, at least for me. I did notice some people 
joining maps and then immediately leaving as if they couldn't fully connect. So there does seem to be some connection issues, at least stability-wise, uh, that is preventing people from having a good time, which is interesting because the PvE side of things uh, is working just fine, which I suspect is because of the fact that it less relies on you know player-to-player -player PvP where you have to shoot other players who are moving with their connection, etc. Things to keep in mind, guys. I definitely say check it out for the PvE. There's some pretty interesting and sort of, uh, not iconic, but uh, quirky things that you can check out there. It certainly doesn't take itself too seriously in the PvE, and there's some pretty interesting boss fights that you can encounter, whether they be mummies or giant robots or giant robot zombies, what have you. Overall, guys, let me know what you think of the game in the comments down below. But if you want to learn more about the more about zombies, monsters, and robots, or want to try it or Hazard Ops if you're in Europe, uh, do check down below at mlbomb.com for the full game profile and more information on how you can do that. Until next time, guys, we'll see you later. Smokeify out. Later, guys.